you said, and some of you already know me, my name is Jason Sherman. I am a serial entrepreneur. I'm also a filmmaker. I have a film production company, which led me to the documentary you see before you. But before I tell you about the film, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and, and where I came from, really, my family as well. Um, and as the debate just took place between Mayfair and Holmesburg, the first home that I purchased was in Holmesburg. Um, before that, my grandfather, Jack Sherman, ran the Devon Theater in Mayfair. That's fine, we can, we can settle that one there. And uh, so my family's been in the area for roughly 100 years. And uh, because of that, I, I feel you know, very proud to be a, a Holmesburg and Ciccone resident and businessman. Uh, but as I said, I first bought a home in Holmesburg, two blocks away from the King's Highway. Now, I had no idea that it was two blocks away from the King's Highway. I just thought it was a house in Northeast Philly. Uh, you know, typical, typical row home on Sheffield Avenue. I also own a home in Ciccone. Again, two blocks from the King's Highway, a mile apart, less than a mile apart. And I ran a business there for roughly six years, a brick and mortar store, successful. So I've been in the area for roughly 10 years, but my family's been here for forever. And I had no idea, like I said, that this area was the beginning of a lot of different things in our history. And when I started to find out, I became engrossed and fascinated by this area. A little bit of serendipity is why I found out, thanks to the Indian Trail at Pennypack. Um, and, and all of the Indian trails along the way. You know, the King's Highway used to be an old path, just all dirt roads. You know, people that are in the audience will tell you everything was just a dirt path. And as you might, may or may not know, Frankfurt Avenue, a.k.a. the King's Highway, is the oldest road in continuous use in the United States, which is, a, which is huge. It's like something that people just don't know. And the fact that it was a, a major route between New York and Philadelphia, George Washington and General Rochambeau, the French and the Americans, traveled this route for the revolution on their way to the Battle of Yorktown to be, claim victory from Britain and independence. So as uh, Patricia was mentioning, the W3RT, the, the Washington Rochambeau Revolutionary Route National Historic Trail is very important and the King's Highway played a huge part in that. This man here, Roland Williams, who's not here tonight, was the bit of serendipity. I happened to open a newspaper one day, which I normally don't do, I'm sorry to say, but it was the Northeast Times and Roland Williams was on the front cover for the Park Patrol and I found that he was a part of uh, the, you know, the Pennypack Park System and he was giving nature tours and Native American tours and then I started talking to him on the phone and I found out that, wow, this area is thousands of years old and this area used to be all farmland and forests and just Indians and campsites and hunting grounds. So I, I, again, I became fascinated by that. So he started telling me about how the Swedes and the Dutch came in the 1600s and they started to settle in the lands here in Frankfurt and Holmesburg and all the different burgs and, and, and villes and fords in the area. And again, I became fascinated by the fact that there's so much history that goes before you know, Center City, Independence Hall and, and, and our forefathers. Again, this is an old map. This is courtesy of Joe Menkovich. Um, this is uh, basically an old map that shows Native Americans and the forests and the animals that inhabited. This was basically what it looked like back then. And then, of course, the King's Highway. So we have the, the British King and William Penn uh, with a royal edict stating, you know, we're going to make these Indian trails more of a, a, a road for our people, our carriages, our horses, our soldiers, people to go to and from Philadelphia to New York. And it went from Boston all the way to South Carolina. It means 1,300 miles. It took 50, uh, 50 years to build. This is very important. I mean, this is how people were getting around. And then, of course, William Penn got tired of trudging through the water of the Pennypack Creek. And he told the king, listen, we need some, some money and some people to build a bridge so we can start you know, taking our fancy shoes out of the water and taking our carriage and our horses over a bridge. So, Again, it was kind of a, a royal thing where everybody had to pitch in, either pay a fee or pitch in their, their sweat equity to build the King's Highway Bridge in 1697. It's the oldest bridge in continuous use in America. It's very important. People drive past it or over it every single day and they have no idea what it is. It's kind of ridiculous, which is why we're doing the film. This was 
kind of the basis was the King's Highway and the bridge and everything around, on, or off of the King's Highway because it's not just a road, it's everything that goes off of that road. So my crew and I started filming all sorts of locations, both on the ground and in the air, and we're gonna continue to do that for the next few months. We've already captured countless hours of, of aerial photography and videography uh, of all the, all the beauty that this area has to offer. Of course, you all know these locations, so does everybody else. This is Philadelphia, supposedly, when people say, oh, you're from Philly. So you know the Liberty Bell, you know Independence Hall, you know the Love Park, you know the Rocky Statue, the Art Museum, Betsy Ross's house, and all the other countless historic locations in Center City. But Northeast Philadelphia has so much history, it's ridiculous. And finding that out now has, has become this, this film. Now, the French and Indian War doesn't have much to do with the film, but it does have a, a part of history that I feel as though is something important, because it's when George Washington, at the time, was 22 years old, he was lieutenant colonel, and the Indians were first allied with the French because they were tired of British occupation. Philadelphia was then occupied by the British and, and the French and the British were constantly battling over land. So to me it's kind of important because it shows the beginnings of what became the, 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 the fighting and, and the Revolutionary War. Of course the French and the Americans united, which was a big deal. And then we marched down to Yorktown to beat the British. And where did we do that? On the King's Highway, on the Washington Rochambeau route. Very important. Thanks to everybody in this room, all the historical societies, the civic associations, preservationists who are writing years worth of documents to save buildings along the King's Highway, volunteers, and then of course you have archeologists who make sure when people are developing on land, they're making sure that all the artifacts in the ground are being taken out first and that they're preserving certain areas. Without all of the people that are involved with these areas, we would probably not have anything at all at this point. So I mentioned Joe Menkovich, good example of a volunteer, somebody who spends years writing documents and doing archival research and spending days and weeks and months and years writing these 80-page papers to get a historical nomination for the local registry for a location such as the cemetery that he recently got approved. Uh, without people like Joe Mankovich and these nominations, we are going to lose the history that we have left. You all know what this is, 95. It tore through like a bat out of hell and just started demolishing and demolishing and demolishing. And uh, the historic homes, historic buildings, um, tons of history just gone. We can't ever get it back. Sure, it's progress. You can now drive to Center City in 10 minutes, but at what cost? So we have to at least try to preserve what we can now. So people like Ken Milano, who know this really well. He's written books about the area lower down in Kensington and Fishtown. Um, he's seen Fishtown turn from a fishing town to a new kind of town with a highway in the middle and you can't see the river anymore. So, you know, these types of locations that have to be preserved are, are being demolished on a daily basis. If none of you know what this is, or some of you know what this is, it's the Jolly Post. It's also no longer here with us. Uh, found a beautiful drawing of it. This is a very historic location. Um, delegates and, and future presidents and uh, all sorts of famous people met at this inn. It was also a stagecoach uh, stop and a post office as well. And you know, Jack McCarthy uh, has written an article about it. And it, it, there was a little bit of a debate whether or not it was McVeigh's Tavern or the Jolly Post where certain events took place. But it all kind of leads towards the Jolly Post. Uh, Th Thomas Jefferson uh, was the person who wrote the Declaration of Independence. Now, I didn't know that, nor did I care to look into that or do research about it, but I always wondered why he was on the $2 bill and why the Declaration of Independence was on the back of the $2 bill. I never really understood why. Uh, but, but that's a very important piece of history. And it, supposedly, the, 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 the time that the people met at the Jolly Post, they were discussing all these different types of things that were gonna take place. Now, delegates from Massachusetts and, and New York and Philadelphia and Virginia, everyone would meet there and discuss who should write the declaration. And they supposedly decided this fact at the Jolly Post. Again, we don't have records of it, but this is what people think. 
And again, that, that becomes something very important is if this, 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 this place here in Frankfurt is where the history of America took place, that's pretty historic. Fred Moore just told me about this. T Timothy Matlack um, was the person who actually wrote the declaration. He penned it. He did not come up with the words. He was the man who penned it. And he died in my village of Holmesburg. So that's kind of cool, too, to know that the guy who actually penned the declaration died in my hometown. Going back to the Jolly Post for a second, why was it torn down? In 1911, I just don't get it. I'm still flabbergasted. Why was it torn down for this? Do, do, we, do we need a laundromat? Is that what we really needed? We needed a laundromat and whatever else is on Frankfurt Ave. So, you know, luckily downstairs, we have this left of the Jolly Post, thanks to people who took a few uh, pieces of it before it was taken away completely. So thanks to the Historical Society of Frankfurt for keeping such an amazing relic downstairs. Uh, we were just talking about this, Smiley. Uh, 1847 Bridesburg Public School was recently demolished. L and I did not care that it was approved for local registry on the, on the local register for, for National Historic Places. It was approved recently because uh, a lot of the civic associations have been doing this 2035 initiative to save a lot of the, the area, and this was approved. So I, was, I got a tip, I got a call, head over to this location, they're knocking it down. I was able to shoot video and photographs of it. It, 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 uh, it got some viral growth on Facebook and then it got into the news. Uh, so that was a pretty big deal. And when I talked to the licensing and inspection guys at the job site and the demolition guys, I was trying to ask them, why are you knocking this down? Do you know how old it is? And did you know that it was approved for local register? They said, we don't know, we don't care. That was it. We don't know, we don't care. That's awesome. Thanks for not caring about our history. So how many more demolitions is it going to take for people to open their eyes up and realize that we are losing our history slowly? I'm wondering how many that is. As I walked on all these tours with various different people, either in this room or not in this room, I have been finding so many beautiful buildings and churches and schools and structures and bridges rivers and creeks and museums and libraries. It's ridiculous how much stuff is in this area that people just don't know about. We have to preserve this stuff. It's beautiful. I mean, just being able to, to just be in these locations and knowing that our ancestors were here for hundreds of years and we're just bypassing it and not even taking a second look at it. A little sad. But thanks to people like Fred Moore and others in the room and these mentionable associations and organizations, we're, we're starting to fight against that. And, we're, and, we're, and they've been fighting against it for 50 years plus, 100 years here at this society. So you know, we have to raise more awareness of that. And that's the goal of the film, is to raise the awareness of these locations, show their beauty, show the meaning behind them, the stories behind them. And there's so many stories that we're going to tell in this film that people just don't know about and then once they hear about it they're going to they're going to take a second look at these areas and they're going to want to tell their friends and their family th these stories as well and the ultimate goal would be to start a tour i mean center city's got a million of them i think we need at least one where you have a bus you hop on and off and actually one of the perks of the film when we have our funding our fundraising campaign on kickstarter uh, one of the larger amounts of money will be to purchase uh, tickets to the bus tour. So we're actually going to already have a bus tour. Um, we'll rent a bus, really nice one, and we'll get the tour for when the funding round is finished sometime, you know, in the springtime, that you will see a tour bus, you will see a sign on it, you will see a tour going through Northeast Philadelphia showing all of the historic locations that need to be seen by people outside of Center City. Bring the love out of Center City. Bring it to Northeast Philadelphia. And the next time you walk, you drive, you're looking down Frankfurt Avenue, AKA the King's Highway. Remember, hundreds of years ago, the colonial people and the Native Americans and the soldiers were walking down that same exact road. Just take a look around you and just imagine what it was like instead of just walking right past it and tell others about it. Thank you very much.
Am I taking questions, Patricia? Please take questions. Yes, folks. I think there's some folks here who have a lot of uh, history uh, in terms of research in the area. Sure. I mean, I'll do my best to answer questions. <laughs> if anybody has one. Uh, how are we going to pay to keep these buildings? Sure. Money. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the, the ultimate goal, and, and yeah, the ultimate goal, I don't have a genie, um, so I can't obviously ask for a billion dollars, but, uh, you know, my goal in, in, in the film is to spread the awareness that is sorely needed in the area. Uh, with the awareness, my hope, I can't guarantee anything, of course, or make promises, but my goal is to attract a wide variety of people with deep pockets in other parts of the country who either grew up in Philadelphia and no longer here or still are in Philadelphia and just, they're like, wow, I didn't know this stuff existed. I, I have $50 million, here's two. Do what you need and give it to the right organization, split it up or whatever, um, find preservationists, find archeologists, talk to all the associations and see where we can allocate the funds. I'm just curious. Uh, I used to work downtown in the tourist industry there, and you, you say you're going to have an on again, off again bus. Uh, are you getting involved with the company that runs that bus, the buses in, in Center City? It would probably be. It, it would be a smart idea only because they have the infrastructure already built. But I don't have to. We can we can start our own up here. There's no. We don't have to. What's that? You have to pay the, the no, we're we're in the middle. We're in the middle of production of the film right now. So that film is taking you know all the precedents, and then once that's completed, uh, we'll have the bus situation figured out. It it shouldn't be too difficult because we're only going to start with one at first to see you know to see where that goes and see because the people who purchase the tickets in in the fundraiser are the ones who are going to be on the bus. So we're not going to be looking to do a public tour at first. It'll be more of a private tour, and we'll be renting everything temporarily. And if it's successful and people actually start asking about it, then we'll start looking into that. And if other people in the area want to help organize um, the tour, that would be helpful as well. I think what has to happen is the same thing that happened in Northern Liberties and Fishtown and Kensington, uh, the gentrification that's been happening down there for the past 10 years. I, I lived in Fishtown, but Fishtown had never gotten where Frank had gone, the Frank had gone kind of blew it apart and break down on the gate that thing. But if we could take, but you have to start somewhere, and you have to start more. Yeah, it's a, it's a big project. I mean, it's it's there's it's no secret. Northeast Philadelphia is humongous. I mean, there's like 15 boroughs or whatever villages. So it's, there's so many places that you have to you have to do that with. I mean, Ciccone has the revitalization program, the 2035 initiative, and that's going well so far. They're getting a lot of things on the historic register. We need to do that for all the other ones too. The register does not save them. Exactly. Right. Well, it it, it's it it's the beginning though. It's the beginning to it. Without the registry, they can just knock it down. You know, and then you can't save it at all. But at least if it's if it's on the register, then you could work towards renovating it and, and saving it. But if you don't have it on the register, a developer can come in, buy them all out, and just knock them all down and build condos. You know. Yeah, I agree. Right. Yep. No, I agree. We need we need more. My ancestor 
was a Hessian captured at the Battle of Trenton. His name was Johannes John Helta, changed to Hill. And people in my family, my grandmother's maiden name was Hilt. And I do believe he was traveling after he was captured to a prisoner of war camp here for four years until the war was over. And he stayed here and that's why I'm here today. Wow. And I think the State Road also has a name similar to the King's Highway. And I forget what it is. That's fascinating. Well, let me add two to her, fa her family goes way back. <laughs> yes, yes, some of our families too. When you, any, anybody who has a story, feel free to email me or go to my Facebook page and write to me so I can get your story documented. I would love that. Um, I have an active blog on the website where I write these stories, and I'd like to write your story you know, for the blog one day for an excerpt or a story to tell the world about it. Again, people need to know it's not just about the movie, it's about everything else. I'm also a journalist, so you know, any, any piece I can write to help spread the awareness in the meantime, please reach out to me. I mean, the fact of the matter is um, any neighborhood that has historic homes that are in good shape brings the value up in a neighborhood. It does, you know, people think that, oh, well, the, the, the property and the land is worth more to me than the building, but that's not true. They, they think they can put up like a bigger house and make money off of it like they did in Fishtown, but that's actually not true. The more historic, it's statistically, the more historic homes in a neighborhood, the more the value goes up. And there's a right way to restore these properties, getting the right kind of uh, contractor who knows how to do it. So I, I agree with everyone here. We, we need to keep these properties, you know, renovated and, and looking nice so that the public doesn't want to knock them down. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear stories of, uh, you know, I, I know Susan said she, her family comes back all the way to William Penn's time um, and you have Hessian relatives, so I'd love to hear more stories about that to include. Anybody else have any questions? Stops that you have in the back, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, like, for instance, Fred Moore took me on a tour recently, and Ken Milano did, and, um, you know, a few others have been taking me on these walking tours, so there's a lot of locations. Um, for a, a, a tour bus to stop at all of them would probably take two or three days, so we're going to have to try to consolidate the most historic locations in one day, and then as you're driving past others, just have them explain what they are and tell stories along the way. But yeah, so you might, you might be able to hit 10 to 15 locations in a day, like really good ones, you know. It's, good, the, it's a good question, actually. What the film is actually about, the, the, it's, it's all about a style. And the style that I'm going to go for is a visual experience of the area showing artistic and beautiful scenery, time lapses, panoramas, uh, aerial videography using our drones, and interlaced with before and afters. So there might be an empty lot or a new building and then transitioning into an old photograph or an old, an old uh, art piece of that, what it used to look like. And then intertwined with all of that, we're gonna have all the interviews of the experts, um, people speaking on camera about the stories, the locations, the areas, what used to be here, preservationists. I mean, we're following around preservationists and hearing their woes and then we're talking to historians and hearing their praise. So we're gonna try to include a, a wide variety of all of that in one and a half hours or two hours to really get the entire scope of the area so people really understand what they're missing out on. And you folks will all have an opportunity to speak one-on-one sure. on one with Jason uh, after we return. Thank you very much.